Don Don Global, Global presents, presents the DG Recruit Podcast on everything headhunting and recruitment. Achieve the life and career you envision. What's up, game changers? It's your host, Don Don, founder of Don Don Global, the headhunting and career coaching company helping you achieve the life and career you envision. In today's DG Recruit Podcast, we will cover four things that you can leverage. Um, to be happy in your recruitment career and potentially in life as well. So in other words, this podcast, we're actually going to cover how to combat negativity in recruitment. And again, hopefully this is the same advice that you can use on so many different areas of your life. I've certainly been here before where there are days where I'm not as happy as I usually am, or I'm not as motivated as I'd like to be. And this is just human nature. You can't be perfect every single day. We're not goddamn robots. So of course, there's always going to be some downtimes that you give yourself, whether to go on vacation, whether to recharge, whether to celebrate. All those are amazing things. What I'm talking about is if you're struggling to kind of pick yourself up, find that motivation again, or you're, you're finding it hard to, you know, kind of, kind of be happy while you're doing the job. Um, I really hope today's podcast is going to really speak to you and help you get that wind beneath your wings so that you will feel excited, motivated. And even if you're having a kick-ass week and an amazing time, you can never have enough of this kick-ass, whoop-ass <laughs> motivational talk. So um, I hope you enjoy this podcast and let's dive right in. So four things. The first thing that I always revert back to when I start getting negative about recruiting or when I start being demotivated, when I'm just lazy and I just can't be bothered to work, I always like to remind myself this is the most important thing is be grateful, be excited, be really thankful for the opportunity. And that that is my default celebration. That's my default kind of like every time I feel down about recruiting, that's my number one go-to because remind yourself, this is a privileged job. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, are you kidding me? We eat shit for dinner and lunch and breakfast. We take everybody's garbage out to the trash and we have to do all the dirty work. And then not to mention we're on low base salaries. I hear you. Yes, those are the negative parts of it. But the good part of recruiting is that this is the one of the very few jobs that you don't need to do hard labor, all right? We don't have to do any hard labor if we don't want to. Um, You don't even have to go see your clients and candidates if you choose not to. If you just don't want to see them, you don't have to. It's elective, right? This is an amazing job that you can make two to three to four to five to six hundred thousand dollars a year as an employee. And obviously, if you own your own agency, God knows, I mean, it could be a lot, it could be a little, just depends how much you want to work, right? This is a luxurious privilege. What kind of job? Like my parents have to bust their ass at a restaurant 12 to 14 hours a day for seven days a week at the age of 64 and 65. And they will not make what recruiters make. They will not earn more than recruiters earn on a W-2. So who do you think is working harder? Do you think, do you want to be like the person working at Walmart? Like, do you think that's a good job? What about the person who is selling real estate and has to go and show open houses on weekends? Or the person who has to code stuff till they're, they go blue in the face and they have to like go to lots and lots of school and they have to like code. I couldn't do any of those jobs. I don't want to work in a restaurant. I don't want to be a bartender. I don't want to work till midnight. I don't need, we don't need to do any of those things in recruiting. In recruiting, we sit on our fat asses pretty much all day long and we can move around if we have a standing desk. We just chill the fuck out. It's an amazing job. Like all we have to do is literally make calls. That's it. Like all we do is talk to people and we can make over 200 grand a year. Like that's insane right? Like customer service agents, they also have to talk to people for a living, but they make like 45 to 50 grand. What kind of living is that? Right? Like we have this luxurious opportunity and never, ever forget that. That's what I always fall back on. I'm like, hold on, let's take a step back here. What the hell else would I be doing with my free time to earn a living? 
When I was unemployed for two years, when I took a retirement, when I was 28, I decided to retire from working because real estate and recruitment had treated me very well. And I was (laughs) doing really good. And I literally was like, what am I going to do all day? Like, do I want to become a professional singer? No, there's a lot of issues with that. Do I want to be an actress? Hell no. A lot of issues with that. I can't be bothered. Um, Do I want to be a ski bum? Try that. Did not like it. I was like, Jesus, how many days do you want to ski? I'm not Olympic level skier. Like, how is this useful? Right? Turns out I'm so goddamn practical that I just want to recruit more. (laughs) Like, I just love the money in recruiting. I love money and I love the cash flow. Right? I also really enjoy the job itself. It's freaking fun. Don't forget how fun this job is. Holy shit, this job is fun. This job is so much fun. Like clients call you and you fight with them and you argue with them. Candidates call you, you fight them, you argue with them, you show them what's up. What? Dueling of the wits. It's freaking fun. Intellectually, you're stimulated. Mentally, you're stimulated. You're competing with yourself, with others, whatever. It's invigorating, right? This job itself is really fun and invigorating. How cool is that? right? It's, it's really awesome. It truly is. So I never forget how wonderful this job is and the lifestyle it gives me and the job itself. And ultimately, we're freaking helping people still. You know, as much as I tell people that's like not the forefront, it certainly isn't, but it's a big part of it. I do enjoy helping people. I love the underdog. That's what I realized recently is why I love recruiting so much is that I'm the ultimate underdog person like I'm an underdog and I support underdogs I'm all about that underdog right so that's why I cry during movies a lot uh, because either the underdog's gonna win and I cry out tears of joy or the underdog gets killed and I cry tears of sadness but I'm the ultimate underdog savior hero type right like I just want to come in and save people so like today one of my candidates called me I placed her you know like a week ago and we finally got the offer signed everything's good she called me she's crying she's like I'm so happy. Um, These are tears of joy. I was like, I felt touched. I was like, oh, that's so great. I'm like happy, so happy, right? Like I genuinely am happy. Even though I'm not getting paid six figures like I was a per deal doing executive placements and life sciences like I used to, I still love placing candidates and recruiting because I get a lot of money for it. It's very nice money. I appreciate it. I'm grateful. Remember, grateful. But I'm also loving the impact that I have on my candidates and clients. Like it's genuinely still extremely, extremely fulfilling, right? Because on both the client side and the candidate side, I'm the underdog. I'm helping the underdogs. And that feels amazing. That really does feel amazing. So adopt an appreciative and grateful attitude towards recruiting and God knows what else is going on in your life. And you'll find a lot more happiness a lot more positivity, a lot more motivation because I understand, I feel you. There's so much negativity going on in the world and trust me, I will be out there freaking losing my shit and I do, but then when it comes back to recruiting, I find that that's my happy zone, that's my happy place. Number two, what is your why? We cannot negate the importance of money. Money, 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 money. It's still a beautiful tantalizing word that if it doesn't get you excited, I really hope you find some way to love it again because it is exciting. Like money makes the world go round. Money, there's just, I love the word. Other than my own name, there's no sweeter sound than the sound of cash and money. I love money. Money is just such a beautiful phrase. And why, why are you motivated? Why are you going to work? What is motivating you? Because obviously helping people feels good and all, but what's making you eat the shit on the daily grind consistently Weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of taking people's shit to ultimately collect the fee, right? So why are you so excited about money? What are your goals? What's the alternative, right? Fine. If not this job, what other job? And how's that going to hurt your pocket, right? Like originally I wanted to leave my old firm and I was so desperate to leave. I was like, I might consider selling juice because I met these people who were in this very fancy part of Long Island and had a juice company. They were a bunch of young people. Turns out, I think they were like inherited wealth. But anyways, at the time, I thought they were legit business people. And so I was like, hey, maybe it's a good idea if I become head of sales and I'll freaking sell your juice to every single grocery chain. I thought I was going to make millions of dollars selling their stupid juice. Turns out I did the math. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I cannot beat the money in recruiting because the money in recruiting is so good that if my goal is to be rich and successful and make money, 
I really can't justify doing anything but recruiting because I get the most amount of money for the effort I put in. I could be driving around to all these grocery stores, making money for these other people selling their stupid juice. Instead, I could just be doing what I do best by myself, which is recruiting, right? So again, it's, I love money and I'm always looking for money. Money is a wonderful thing and I need money. That's why I'm in the game. Well, why do I still work even though I don't have to work? Because I love money. That is the sign of a really money motivated person. At this point, it's not even about the money anymore. It's about the game, right? I want more money. I want more houses. I want more of an empire. I want more investments. I want more Airbnbs. I want more money to pay for the house that I'm going to build next year. It's going to cost 400 grand. Like these are the things that I need money for. So I'm going to either study and get a lot of loans from like the mortgage system, or I'm going to earn it from real uh, from recruiting. And I do both. I earn it from both my active real estate investments. I earn it from recruiting and I also earn it from loans, right? Taking out debt, leverage by using leverage. So I love money. Money is very interesting to me. And so every time you feel like you're moving away from this job or this money, just remind yourself, why am I really motivated? What is motivating me? What is that? Where do I need to dig in my heart? Where is the chip on my shoulder? For me, it's being a woman. As a woman, I cannot rely on a man. My mom made me aware of that ever since I was little. And I saw that with my own eyes when my dad was constantly gambling. Oh, hell no. Woman cannot rely on a man. You got that right. Right. Mm -mm, That's not going to work for me. And then also growing up poor. (laughs) For growing up poor. I was like the charity kid in the whole entire neighborhood. We lived in the rich people's house where they're minority servants and we're taking care of their children. We're literally, I'm the daughter of the help. You don't start off lower in life than that. Literally, it's like modern day servant life. I'm the daughter of the servant, for real. My mom climbed out of poverty, and God damn it, if I'm not gonna climb out of poverty myself. My mom's not gonna help me. She's not gonna pay for all my debts. She's not gonna take care of me. She's not gonna give me any jobs. She's still hustling on her own grind, right? I need to figure out my own shit. So that's my why. My why is I grew up with this huge chip on my shoulder. I'm a woman. And I did not like that. And I still struggle with being a woman because I know I'm at a disadvantage. And then also, I, I, that's, but that's what motivates me is that I feel I'm a fighter. I feel genuinely like I'm a fighter. I'm the underdog, right? Like I will do what it takes to win. And, and it doesn't like, I will do whatever I need to do. You know, like I don't care who I'm going up against, which is why I never cried at all, ever in anything that was deal or business related, ever. Never cried, never cried because there's nothing to cry about. It's just business, it's just money and this is the life I chose. I'm a businesswoman and I don't care. I don't care. This is just money, right? I'm here to make the money and I'm here to love the money and I care for the money and the money takes care of me, right? So I love it, I genuinely do and every time you feel yourself falling out of love with it, just remind yourself, what do we need to do if we wanna have a nice life? What do we need? We need the Benjis. We need the Benjis. That is what we need. You want a nice car? You want a Maserati? You, you want all those things that Brittany told us about? You better work, right? You better work, work. So we know that. And what is the alternative? What's the alternative? What am I going to do? Be an HR person? What am I going to do? Go and freaking, I don't know, work in a food kitchen? Like, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. I'm going to work my ass off and keep making this green right? That's what I decided. That's my goal. So stick with your goal. You want the money. You're here to make it. Persevere. Make it happen. You can't give up halfway through, right? If I came here to make money out of self-dignity, I better make some damn money or else I'm not leaving, right? If other dimwits can make it, I goddamn can. That's how I look at the world, right? Like if those dimwits can freaking do it, why the hell can I not? Am I not as smart as these dimwits, right? Like is this so genius, so hard, Is recruiting so damn difficult that only the most genius of people can figure it out? I don't think so. I think it's pretty doable. You just have to work at it and put in the hours and bust your butt and like not take people's shit, right? Figure it out. Figure out the system. Figure out what's working. Figure out what are the ways that you get clients to pay you and hire you and use you. Same on the candidate side, right? That's it. That's all this business is. So focus on your why. Find that why. Dig in deep. Press that sword into your heart and really feel the pain, feel the blood, and understand this is why I'm fighting. This is what I'm fighting for, right? This is the chip on my shoulder. This is what gets to me. I genuinely feel this to this day. Get money or die trying. I definitely freaking feel that today. I still feel that hunger and pressure as much as I did, even though I'm a lot more complacent these days than I used to be when I was dirt poor. 
Anyways, the third point, and you can already hear me building up to this, is to be happy, positive, to fight negativity in recruiting, you need to have mental fortitude and mental health. That's actually really important. So I like to look at it as three different things to get mental health in recruiting. One, you need a supportive network. I used to date a lot of shitheads from my entire 20s, literally from the age 22 to age 32, I dated assholes. I had a a knack for picking out people who would leverage me, who would use me and abuse me mentally and who would just like make me feel like shit. They love bomb me, all that, gaslight me, everything. All those terms, yeah, happened to me. Freaking sucked, right? And it caused me a lot of anxiety at home. But at work, I don't know, I was always really good at managing anxiety. I was a little bit better, right? Because work, I don't take it personally. Nothing to be taken personally. So having a supportive network like I do now, like my partner, he's just wonderful. He's just the the best person I've ever met in my life. I don't know what I would do without him at this point, right? So to have him in my life is a luxury and it's a privilege and it's an asset. Having a good, secure partner who supports you isn't gonna shit on your parade, isn't gonna yell at you for being a goddamn capitalist isn't gonna like tear you down because you make more money than they do and they feel emasculated you know those are all things that happen to me quite often multiple people felt emasculated by me because I had so much more money than they did and they would take it as a personal affront they would be like personally very much like defensive about it. I dated one guy who was like, well, I'm a white male, but still like I've been abused and I haven't had it easy. I'm like, dude, what are you even talking about? We're not even having that conversation. Like who is even talking to you about that? Like real story, real thing. I'm like, dude, like I'm not even talking to you about that. I would never make someone feel less than due to money. Money is just something I personally worked very hard and got. It's not, doesn't make me smarter. doesn't make me better than anyone else. It just means I focus more on it and I did the work required to get there. doesn't make me a better human, right? Like that's not the attitude I take with people. And yet so many people do not treat me the way I want to be treated. And I let that happen because of low self-esteem, lack of self-love for a very long time and just not meeting the right person. Now that I've met the right person, I can, I'm unleashed. My power is doubly unleashed. I feel so secure. I feel so ready. I feel so happy. I feel so like just confident and I have a game plan now. I have a game plan. I have a North Star. I have a, I have a dream that's just more fortified because I have stability in my personal life, right? Same with relationships with parents. It took me a lot of time to get to where I am today. I have a good relationship with them for once. We had a really rocky relationship for a very, very long time, even as soon as last year. You know, we had a very rocky relationship, but with the help of my partner, with the help of myself and like letting bad shit go, I'm letting a lot of the childhood trauma go away. I mean, my mom did a number on me. My dad did a number on me. I'm mommy, daddy issues. I have both. Right? Like, I've got a lot of issues, which speaks to getting mental health help, like therapy. I use BetterHelp. Please use my affiliate code, please. Um, if you do sign up using it, I can't say enough good things about it. I genuinely enjoy using it. Um, it's my third month using it, and it's made a tangible difference in my mental health, right? Just having someone to vent to every single week is humongous, and it's decently priced. It really is. They are not paying me for this. I just genuinely love it. I think it's wonderful. It's really helped me be happy. And, you know, a lot of people that I see let stress run their lives. Trust me, it's not going to end with recruiting. Just because you're going to be out of recruiting doesn't mean that the stress stops, right? If you want to make a lot of money, you're going to have to face stress and you have to find a way to deal with it. That's really the trouble. You really have to find a way to deal with the stress because stress is nonstop. It's going to keep happening. The older you get, the more stresses you're going to get. It's going to be health. It's going to be business. It's going to be money. It's going to be parents. It's going to be kids unlimited amount of stress is headed our way every single day. That's life. What animal doesn't feel stressed? We all are stressed. So stress is a constant. What's different is how are you managing your stress? How are you managing your anxiety, right? I used to pick my face a lot. Thankfully, now I pick it less because I don't, sit in an office every day in my highly toxic workplace. You know, I don't have that as badly as I used to, um, but I still pick at my pimples. I still am like very twitchy and <laughs> I have a lot of issues when it comes to like, you know, how much I bite my nails and those are all elements of stress and stress management, stress relief, right? So like, how are you dealing with your stress? Are you working out? Are you eating healthy? Like, how are you doing in a healthy way so that you're not self-sabotaging? 
right? We all need a system that works. And this is a system that never has a finality, right? We are always going to be refining, 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 retesting, experimenting, finding different ways to manage our own stress. So, you know, we're all there with you. All of us have a lot of stress. And certainly I do with my evictions and all these terrible tenants that drive me nuts that hold my house hostage. But that's the price it takes to play in the real estate game, right? This is all stress that I've had to deal with since I was 28 because I started getting evictions at that age and I had to learn how to deal with it. It doesn't mean that I stop investing in real estate because a lot of people are like, I'm just going to stop investing. That's not the answer if you want a lot of money out of real estate and it definitely does print money. So how do you get on with it? You freaking learn how to deal with it. Learn how to deal with the stress, right? There could be much worse. And trust me, if you were doing any quote unquote easier job, you'd still be stressed. You'd still have stressors at work. Your boss is still gonna be an asshole. You might be harassed by your colleagues because you're in a low paying job with no support and no power. And you're personally in a weakened financial state, Right, so I made the, the 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 pact with the devil. I said to the devil, "I'm going to go into sales. I'm going to make a shit ton of money. I'm going to put myself through some stress, and I'm going to come out on top. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing that. Get rich or die trying." Number four, last thing, to feel that happiness, to feel that hope and rejuvenation and recruiting, I always like to remind myself that it's not about the dream; it's about the day to day activity. It's about what are you doing on a consistent basis to contribute to your well-being and your business. And that means the daily minutia, the daily KPIs. Those little things deserve reward, deserve recognition. And those are ultimately the steps that are going to lead you to the promised land of success. Because everything else is bullshit. All this like success curation, it's an industry, by the way. This whole thing is industry, right? Law of attraction. They're all trying to sell you some shit. They're trying to sell you some program, some sort of book, some sort of mentality. It's, it's all a humongous, humongous scam. In, in really meant to take money from you and that's how they get rich and for sure (laughs) dream and get rich definitely they've achieved it and the theory is you can too but the reality is you need to do the daily things to get yourself rich dreaming has very little commercial value dreaming and the vision unless you're adam newhart a goddamn con artist who has the connections to all the vcs in the world apparently Unless you're funded by venture capital funds that are paying you for vision, your vision means jack shit in a small business. Like that's what I had to learn the hard way. When I first became an independent entrepreneur, I just thought dreaming would work because it worked for me before. As a worker, it worked for me. I just dreamed and look what happened. I became a millionaire by the time I was 30. Hey, look, my dream worked. It did not. It did not, I mean, it did, but it didn't because of the dreaming. The dreaming wasn't what caused the millionairedom. It was the work. It was the hourly, daily freaking grind that I did in my whole 20s and in my teens to try to freaking learn and get ahead. And it was accumulation of all of those efforts, right? So my point here is, Don't worry about the dream. The dream is usually bullshit. And anyone leveraging the dream is trying to bullshit you. It's not the dream. It's you. It's your actions, your daily minutia, the little things you do on a consistent basis, the every every inch that you push, the every next step you take, the every single extra thing you did. It's all of those little actions that get compounded into a really nice result. And that's what motivates me today. I'm right there with you. Everything I do today is one more video, one more podcast, one more article, one more call, one more pushback, one more email, one more glance at my email to fix it, to make sure it's really saying what I wanted to say, one more effort, one more push, one more conversation. All of these are accumulating into more money, into more opportunity for me, right? I'm the one that benefits from all this. So again, from the dream element, throw that away and focus on the daily activity. So these four tips are hopefully going to be helping you be more positive. (laughs) And I know I was being kind of negative during this podcast, but I hope it makes you actually feel more positive, ironically. Um, And these are the things that I'd say to myself. These are the things that make me feel motivated and rejuvenate my passion to get the shit I need to do done on a daily basis. Because if I don't get to it, nobody will. 
I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if, as usual, if you haven't already, there's like about a hundred of you that owe me reviews. Please write me reviews. I really need them for the podcast and I really want to have them. And that's what motivates me to do more of these podcasts. So please, 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 if this is appealing to you and you're getting value out of these podcasts, please go ahead and drop me a review. It will mean the world to me. Please do so. I would love to love to hear your feedback on the podcast. Five star reviews, ideally, please. Um, and please send me more questions. <laughs> I've not gotten too many questions. So please do send me some questions on what content you want me to make next uh, because I am running out of topics. So send me anything you like and I'm glad to incorporate it into the next podcast. I hope DG Recruit is helping you understand the realities, challenges, and opportunities when it comes to headhunting and recruitment. Whether you're already a top biller or an aspiring headhunter, I'd love to get to know you. Sign up at DonnaGlobal.com to stay in touch on all aspects of career coaching and headhunting. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in to DG Recruit. This has been a production of Donna Global.